Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fellow workers in government and members of the press. The 43rd ASEAN Summit and related summits demonstrated that countries around the region are committed to regional cooperation and multilateralism, but remain challenged in promoting peace, security, stability, and prosperity in the region. I was able to participate in 12 leaders-level meetings, including with Australia, Canada, China, India, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and the United States, and the United Nations. In these meetings, I promoted and highlighted key interests of ASEAN, such as food and energy security, migrant workers' protection, climate change, and digital transformation, issues that are of strategic importance to the Philippines. Fellow ASEAN member states and some external partners highlighted the importance of a rules-based international order. They also maintain that ASEAN is a competitive and integrated regional economy underpinned by the principle of centrality. The Philippines championed efforts to immediately operationalize guidelines in protecting migrant workers and family members in crisis situations, as well as combating trafficking in persons. I participated in the ASEAN Plus 3 Summit with ASEAN member states and China, Japan, and the Republic of Korea, where we discussed areas of cooperation such as food security, climate change, the digital economy, amongst other things. I also attended the East Asia Summit, which is the premier leaders-led forum on broad strategic, political, and economic issues of common interest and concern. We discussed regional and international issues, during which I emphasized the importance of a rules-based international order, especially in the disputes in the South China Sea, inasmuch as they affect not only our nation, but the entire region. I reaffirmed that the Philippines is committed to the peaceful resolution of disputes and called on all countries to continue upholding freedom of navigation and overflight in the South China Sea, this in accordance with international law, including the 1982 UNCLOS. We urged all parties to exercise self-restraint and refrain from unilateral and assertive activities that could increase tensions and lead to misunderstandings and miscalculations in the South China Sea. We also discussed significant regional and global issues, including the situation in Myanmar, the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, and the conflict in Ukraine, amongst other crisis areas. I met on a bilateral level the leaders of Cambodia, Canada, Cook Islands, India, Republic of Korea, and Vietnam, as well as with the president of the World Bank Group, where we had a robust and candid and very productive discussion. I also held informal talks with the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris on strengthening cooperation in key areas of mutual interest. On the sidelines of the summit, I met with top executives of select Indonesian companies who are looking at the Philippines to further expand their presence. We come home with uh, 22 million U.S. dollars in investment commitments in areas crucial for our economic recovery efforts, such as agriculture and digital economy. I met again with one company which I had dialogues with during my state visit to Indonesia last year, and they updated us on the progress of their investment commitment. This is a clear testament that together we can make it happen in the Philippines. I also witnessed the signing of the Philippines Republic of Korea Free Trade Agreement, which clearly demonstrates the shared commitment of both countries to their mutual economic growth and development. The FTA will strengthen our bilateral trade and investment relations with the Republic of Korea, especially as it generates jobs and contributes to the Philippines' value proposition as an ideal regional hub for smart and sustainable investments. The signing of the FTA is a testament to the realization of the many opportunities for complementation and collaboration between the Philippines and South Korea, and an even greater milestone for our economic friendship. Finally, following consultations among ASEAN member states, I am pleased to announce that the Philippines will chair ASEAN in 2026 instead of 2027. As a founding member of ASEAN, we stepped up to this role to ensure the continuity of our progress towards a people-oriented, people-centered, inclusive, rules-based ASEAN community. I thank our gracious host, and I congratulate President Pidodo for his very able stewardship as chair of ASEAN this year and for making ASEAN as important as it ever has been. 
I also thank them for their very warm hospitality to the Philippine delegation, and I look forward to the able leadership of Lao PDR when they host ASEAN in 2024. Maraming salamat at magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat.